So I want to start from the first question. As I said uh, before, can you bring me please to the context and to the conditions and reasons why a Dutch young Dutch fellow comes to Lithuania in I think year 2000? 2001. 2001, yeah. 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 What was your stereotype before coming here? What did you saw here? And what was the reason? My stereotype before coming here, I think, was very, very little. Um, I think that most, like most people in Western uh, Europe, everything what was former Soviet Union was behind the Iron Curtain. So as long as the Iron Curtain was there, not much. Uh, there wasn't even much knowledge about what was happening there, except that it was sort of Soviet Union, and of course it was different times. So you might not have uh, all, all the. The internet uh, uh, streaming, uh, the latest news was in two seconds all around the world. Uh, so you were you were dependent on on your local TV station or newspaper or, or anything. You know. So I, d I didn't have much uh, knowledge about Lithuania at all, um, except uh, it was part of the Baltic States. The capital was Vilnius, uh, but the, the basic geographics sort of. And uh, why I came here was, was uh, I'm always joking, uh, I didn't come to Lithuania, Lithuania came to me. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, by pure coincidence at that time, when I was still living in Holland, uh, I was a few years after fish, uh, finishing my, my studies, I studied psychology. Um, then for three years I was uh, working in, in uh, consultancy, uh, in human resource related. Uh, then I, I finished my job there because I felt that still, I don't know, there's something else in life to do for me. And, uh, and uh, as a sort of... Um, to fill up the, the, the gap which, which, which uh, leaving my job left, uh, I went uh, to work in, in one place uh, at the beach in Holland, a uh, beach club. Uh, just for the summer, to, to, to pass my summer, earn some money and I always... Uh, during my studies and even during my high school years, I've always been working in Horeca. Uh, so uh, I decided, ah, let's do that for the summer, and then after the summer, we will decide uh, what, uh, what 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 will be my next step in life. Uh, but then that summer proved to be such a great experience, and I enjoyed it so much. And, and we were working like hell uh, days from eight in the morning till two at night, and then uh, we would still. Often we would even sleep at the beach club, so after work maybe we would, we would still have a, a drink or two. And then we, we would sleep for two hours or something like that, and then always at seven in the morning, guy Danny would come in and he would wake us all up. And uh, we would simply walk into the sea to freshen up and uh, walk to worked another 16 hours. And then uh, after the whole summer, uh, and having such an intensive time in working, but having so much joy and fun in that, I was wondering myself, sort of, uh, like, how is it possible that you make such long hours, uh, have so much energy, not getting tired, and, 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 and uh, enjoying yourself so much? And then the, the answer was very simple. Uh, you're having fun, and when you're enjoying yourself, uh, you it generates a lot of energy. So that's, the, that's when you can allow yourself to do much, much, much more than when you have to struggle for something, or mm -hmm. when, when it's difficult to do something. Mm -hmm. So realizing that, um, I decided that so maybe this is what I have to what I have to do, and uh, so and I was working there with one, one one of my friends, which I knew from university, and he had exactly the same feeling. So we we, we said to each other, um, and we were really closest buddies. So we said to each other, uh, let's um, let's see if we can uh, realize this for ourselves and, and then start our own place place on the beach and. Uh, so from that moment we, we started to work on that and uh, basically throughout all the autumn and winter season uh, we have been writing our business plan and in Holland it's like that, that sort of all the vacant places on the beach there are already taken, they are given away, it, it's not that you can get some empty place of beach and start something, so you always have to take over something existing. Uh, existent. Uh, so that's why we had quite some financing needs, uh, because they're, they're not very cheap plots, let's mm -hmm. put, it, uh, put, it, put it like that. Uh, so we have been working on that throughout all the, all the autumn, summer, uh, sorry, autumn, winter and spring. 
And then more or less at the end of the spring, in, in April, May, we, we had it all together actually. Uh, we had a plot which we wanted to buy, we had some really interesting partners we, which were ready to invest into our project. Uh, we had <coughs> so, so all the ingredients were there, uh, but the only thing is that uh, it was actually the beginning of May already. And then we realized that uh, just like here in Lithuania, the, 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 the season is short. So in the beginning of May, sort of, we had the verbal agreement with everybody, but then before to formalize that and to make all the, 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 the complex, to put everything into paper, and you're easily two months, two months further. July, right? So no that would be already July, and then we said that for, for such a seasonal business, it's, it's, it's not good to start in the middle of the season, you know, especially in your first year where your expenses always will be highest. Um, you want to, to to get the full full season, so so we said to this everybody together that that um, let's just put it on the shelf and then let's see for next year and and then uh, two months later I think uh, one of the guys who was supposed to be invest into our project uh, he called me and um, he was one of the things what he was doing uh, at that time he was running some kind of nightlife uh, website uh, for Dutch nightlife website a little bit like you have Aura here in, in the past f for instance mm -hmm. and, uh, and he got contacted uh, by, s by some people from Lithuania or no actually he called me and he said that well if you want to, 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 to start a place for your own I, I got an email here and don't you want to start a nightclub in Russia and I was like mm. I'm not sure if I'm very interested to start a nightclub in Russia, but I said, well, forward me the email, I'll have a look at it, it's always interesting. And then <coughs> um, uh, Russia appeared to be Lithuania, and nightclub appeared to be that the people were looking, uh, were aiming to start the first, let's say, Western European style house club in the, in, in the country. And um, as the owners of the club uh, were both full-time business guys, you can say, uh, so they were they were not, lo not looking to run it themselves, but to make the investments, and they were looking for a manager. And at first they have been looking around in Lithuania, but then they understood that sort of basically what they want to open here is so far from everything what was uh, what existed in Lithuania until then that I understood it will be kind of difficult to find a manager who really can implement all the things as we envision them. So that was the moment that they, they decided to, st to look for somebody abroad. Mm -hmm. um, one of the owners of the club uh, that they used to, to live in Amsterdam for seven years. Uh, in any case, Holland always has been quite big in, 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 in house and club music. Uh, so they have been uh, using their contact sort of to to look in Holland and in the UK uh, as the UK also very leading in in, uh, in the whole clubbing world and um, so yeah one of the guys they contacted uh, was was this friend of mine who was also a potential in investor into our project and then I was like hmm actually that's quite kind of interesting sort of it, it, it triggered me and uh, so I think that I first wrote them an email then we had a long um, sort of uh, interview by phone. And then a few weeks later, they would they they came to Amsterdam, and all those first steps they were all kind of positive. So we had a good click, I would say. And um, so I got more and more interested in the project. Uh, they got more and more interested in me. And then the last step uh, before to take the final decision, I said that well. Of course, <laughs> I would love to see the, the city and, 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 and just to feel it too. So they said, fair enough. So, so they, they brought us over at the end of August in 2001. And it was one of those gorgeous uh, uh, summer weekends, uh, 30 degrees. The city was green, the skirts were short. Um, it uh, and, 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 and in general, uh, Vilnius Old Town, Town is just a very pretty place uh, to be. So, and you asked me earlier, well, what was your um, expectation, sort of, from Lithuania? I told you that pretty blank, mm -hmm. didn't have much. But in general, I think that the, the perception of the whole um, 
Soviet Union East Bloc uh, in the West is always very grey and, and, and potatoes and vodka. Not even so much potatoes and wisdom, but, but just grey and, and sad and depressed and, and things like that. And then when you arrive to, to Vilnius and uh, it's such a beautiful city and the sun is shining and everything is beautiful. Uh, so that that, uh, but and even until to, un, until today, I, I still feel that people who come for the first time to Lithuania, um, most of them at, at best they have neutral expectations, and most of them they're a bit skeptical. But uh, for some reason they decided to come over and to give it a chance. And in a way, I think it's it's a huge advantage for 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 the country for Vilnius as a city that it's always so positively surprising people. That people always are thinking that, ah, we didn't know what to expect, but this is like, wow, fucking amazing. Uh, so that's the general uh, attitude, right? That's the general attitude. And, and uh, I think that in a, in a way, maybe now it, 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 it's even more amazing because the city developed so much. But, uh, but it's still uh, the same feeling probably I had 19 years ago when I arrived here for the first time. And, and of course, the, the, it was a total, totally different city than it is today. Um, but uh, in any case, our first uh, uh, introduction with Vilnius was very, very positive. And so it was, uh, yeah, we, we spent here two, three days. And then uh, it was not hard to make the decision, decision uh, yeah, let's come over and let's... Uh, Let's see the, what kind of adventure we can get uh, here. Was there anything that uh, scared you? Um, not no. First of all, I'm, I'm a very positive thinking guy, so I'm, I'm not so easily scared, and uh, I like challenges. Uh, um, I believe in the, in the I don't know in the, in, the, in the good side of people, uh, um, but of course. Um, you know, you have your family, your parents, and, 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 and some other people close around you, and then they're like, where are you going to Lithuania? <laughs> uh, isn't that very dodgy? Is it very dangerous? How is it with the mafia? And all those things. And, and uh, I, as, 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 as much as I could, I did some research. And, 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 and um, well, of course, uh, in, in those days, Lithuania was still a pretty corrupt country, mm -hmm. but yeah, probably 70-80% of the countries in the world are pretty corrupt, uh, if not 100, <laughs> all in, in different levels. Uh, but uh, so, so yeah, we, 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 we didn't just go blind. We, 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 we yeah, tried to inform us as good as possible, uh, but at the same time, um, my contract was was for I, w I would arrive about four months before open no three months before opening the club and then, and then my contract was uh, one year until from the opening date the the, the first full year mm -hmm. so basically you can say it, uh, 15 16 months contra contract so yeah I was also thinking that what's the worst thing but you yes. can, what can happen uh, if everything is really very bad okay you take the plane back and you're back I mean there's nothing to uh, to and then and, and as I just uh, finished my job in Holland, also there, I, I, it's not that I had to give up my whole life or whatever. No, I was in this in between period in any case. So um, that 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 helped. I had I had not much to lose. Let's let's put it like that. And so so Lithuania knocks on your door. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that the club that you're referring was Pacha. Gravity. Oh, gravity, right? Yeah, gravity. Gravity. The good old gravity. So. How it how it became that at that period I think 2001 2002 we had a better club culture culture in Lithuania than we have now. I, I don't know if it's if it's better. Uh, I find it very difficult to to judge about that. I think that one thing that for sure was better and and um, I just told you that uh, yeah, I came here in the middle of October and then uh, we opened uh, on the 1st of December I think uh, uh, 2001 yeah um, so those first two three months except for starting up the club and arranging everything uh, in, in terms of construction and, and setting up the bars and the drink menus and the staff and, and uh, everything else what what is needed to be able to open 
Um, of course, from the very first weekend, I also started to explore very much what is the local scene and, and, and uh, what is the DJs and where's the parties. And uh, indeed, there was no uh, there was no clubs, uh, at least no house clubs. Mm -hmm. There was some nightlife venues you could call it, where funny, dodgy, uh, cheap, uh, usually Russian kind of music was being played and all. Uh, for me, very exotic. So I enjoyed even those places because it was very interesting uh, for me. But but uh, but the the, the the best places uh, almost every weekend there was some more underground um, uh, house party uh, organized in in in, in various uh, venues, uh, whatever was there for rent, with uh, with some old kind of shitty sound system, usually no ventilation, warm beer. Uh, lightning was maybe a few lights we would, would go on and off but the atmosphere was absolutely kicking it was so nice because everybody was there was really this feeling from like yeah we, we, this music finally came to us and then we are allowed to party and then and, and, uh, so the the, the 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 vibe was so pure and 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 real and 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 pretentious, uh, the, the, not about nobody would be bitching about anything uh, regarding uh, whatever Nothing. the sound quality of dark toys. Or, no, it was just everybody came for the music and enjoyed it and and and, uh, and, uh, and enjoyed it till the end. And then, yeah, the the more quality comes to the country, the more critical uh, critical people are becoming. Uh, and then, uh, at some point, it's becoming like, ah, this is not good, this is not good, that is not beautiful, that is oh, I see a, a crack in the wall, or and, and I don't know. There, there, there has been a long period where everything had to be very beautiful and clean and shining. And I think that only maybe in the last five years there's a little bit of. Uh, um, uh, step back uh, that, that everything can be grungy and, and uh, it's very hipsterish to be in, in an industrial building or in mm -hmm. a very worn out place or uh, I think that there's now a bit two directions so you still diversity in general I mean it's, it's enough of the old uh, as you said clean then like well there are still I think um, quite a big crowd of people who want to be in this more shining places mm -hmm. and there's uh, the kind of people who, understands, who now understands that it's, it's not about uh, all that, it's about the vibe. And, 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 and probably, usually it, it's easier to create a good vibe when people are feeling totally free. And you feel more free, I, th I think, in a, in, a, in a very... in a space where you're not afraid to damage anything or to make anything dirty or uh, you understand that everything is here old anyway already, so I can do whatever I want. Uh, and, and it will be okay. That's th the reason why I don't enjoy partying too much anymore in the Vilnius scene. Because you have places where people go and if they see there is no photographer there, they're not going. So for me it's like, if there is a photographer, I don't want to be photographed puking or like doing some st mm. stupid stuff in the evening. Yeah, uh, I'm exactly the same. Um, I don't know. I think it's it's 2020, and, and uh, there's a group of people who find that the, who seem to find that the the goal of their life, uh, and uh, the, their biggest worry is how do I look on the picture, and uh, and there's maybe a it's side a of society who is just Instagram followers. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very far away from me as well. Uh, I understand business-wise that that, 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 that you, it, it, it's difficult to 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 put it to the side completely. It's 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 still one of your main ways of of communicating with uh, with your audience, uh, no matter what your audience is. Even for the places where it's not so much about photographers or yes, whatever, yes, yes, they yes. also need still the social media. Yeah. Uh, but but in a different way. Uh, in, in some places it's all about the faces and in the other places it's more about uh, the action or the funny scene or the, the culture side of it or the dark side of it or anything. So coming back to gravity, how was your life then? You enjoyed it? Oh, that was a crazy time. <laughs> 
Ja, het was, I, I don't know, I, I still think that it, it was a bit of a revolution in, uh, in uh, Lithuanian clubbing. That's what, uh, I'm, that's what I'm saying, because yeah. I know that like people from my generation are a few years older, they grow, grow up in gravity. Yeah. They found their second, uh, they found their husbands, they found their wives in gravity, yeah. they had the best parties, sometimes they had maybe fights comparing but mm. I don't know I've never experienced any fight uh, I think one small incident I, I think around I, around gravity you know, maybe but around but inside uh, I, I, I can remember only one one small incident where yeah a guy was simply too drunk and he was mm -hmm. but he before anything exploded he was already friendly requested but in general as I saying like the feedback and the, the remembers remembrance of Gravity is really, really, really positive. Yeah. How long it lasted? Was it five years, more or less? I find it, well, for, for me, it, just, uh, it lasted this first year. Uh -huh. uh, by, by the agreement, uh, uh, it, 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 was, it was decided so that that that, that, uh, that uh, there, were, there would be me for the, for the startup, and then they would do somebody else, and then uh, and also during the year, the, the um, how to say that the Connection with, I would say, one of the owners uh, became worse. So there was also no uh, no reason to talk about shall we continue. Uh, we, we sort of we were happy about the first year, but we were also happy to separate again. Let's, let's put it like that. And then um, I don't know. I think that it continued about two, three years, it was really a happening place, and then maybe two years, I would say, and then maybe after that, uh, bit by bit, it, 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 it got worse and more difficult. Uh, also for the simple reason that, of course, more more similar uh, similar places opened up uh, more in the city center. Uh, I think that Gravity had a great location for, for being the first, and it, it was kind of mysterious and you had to go down uh, down the stairs through this long long tunnel to get in it, it, it was an amazing spot um, but at the same time people didn't didn't mind to come out of the center mm -hmm. uh, because in the center there was nothing better uh, so. don't you think it's a bit a bit like a formula for here in Vilnius you have places that rocks for the first two years and then they managed to stay alive for maybe another three four it's not it's not a strict rule we know exceptions but I, again i would say more than probably 80 percent of interesting places that begin time doesn't put value on them for some reason yeah but i'm not sure if that's really a film you I, th i think that it's probably a global thing and especially for nightlife uh, nightlife people are always Uh, seeking for the hottest spots and, and, and the best action and the, yeah, the best everything and it, it, I think it's quite simple it, it, it's, it's not so difficult to open a place and, 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 and to make the, to be busy at least uh, whether you call it a success or not mm -hmm. but, but to be busy in your first year uh, if, if you're not a total idiot let's put it like that and, and you make sure that at least you have uh, a, a nice interior and a decent uh, product, uh, whether it's food or drinks or mm -hmm. music or whatever, it's it's kind of hard to fuck up because people are always inter interested in in, uh, in new experiences and in new places. So I think that the real challenge is not to open up a place and make it a success. The the the, 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 the biggest challenge is to 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 maintain it and and and, and to keep on uh, to, to be a successful place for. Well, forever, but in, anyway, for a long for a long period. Uh, What would be your advice if someone is having this kind of moment? Very simple. Uh, you have to keep on renewing all the time and to adapt uh, to the. You always have to keep up and uh, never lean back. Uh, uh, But I think in 2007 or 8 or something like that, I was involved in the, in the Pacha project here in Vilnius, the Pacha Vilnius. That's why I thought. Yeah. Um, 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 so, so there I did the whole startup phase and then the first two, three months after opening. Um, and for me, why that whole project was 
extremely interesting is, is that uh, it's a franchise concept. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a franchise by, by, by the, the, the Spanish Barca, which is, I think that by now they, 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 they sold the business a few years ago. But, but uh, they used anyway, to be, right? In, in, in that time it was still a pure family business. So the, the, the father started it and he had two sons who took over. And uh, so there was quite some visits to uh, Abita involved. Uh, of course, uh, some of them they, they visited here as well. And to talk to all the people who were involved in in this uh, enormous nightlife imperium, which which, which it was by that time, uh, which was, which started in '66. So at that time it was 40 plus years, and and, and uh, they had hundreds of nightclubs, uh, of course mostly in Spain, but also uh, in other countries around the world, and and all, yeah, still pretty much according to the same formula. And and uh, one of the things which I would, which I remind best maybe of of, of that whole cooperation, always reinvest 25 percent of your profit into your place, back into your place. Particular what, interior. Mostly, uh, mostly interior, of course. Yeah, but always make sure that you can continue, continue to change uh, some things. Uh, always keep on surprising people a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Do something new. Do something different. Uh, there's very, very few places uh, which can remain the same always. Usually, it, 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 it's it's the kind of places which uh, where the whole theme is that we are an old place, sort of, um, Amati Ninko is an is, 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 uh, example which, which springs to mind. And, I mean, that's just the concept of place and then... And, uh, You're having the same Cipollina as your grandfather had. Yeah, sort of like that. So, so, that, so there's very few places who, who can... But even they, uh, they, 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 they closed uh, this year for a few months to, to, to at least redo their toilets and some... I mean, some things uh, at some point need some maintenance and or stuff like that. But... Um, um, but but that's that's a few few of those example uh, exceptions. Uh, that there's those places where people come because everything is the same already for endless sort of. But except for those places, uh, I, I I don't know any place which can remain the same uh, and be successful uh, all the time. But I still I still think there is a small difference when we spoke about nightclubs that they really have to keep keep up with the time and uh, yes. show and comparing with restaurants I hear what you're saying that you all there has to be always some attention and not just being laid back but would you say that the speed of that is a bit less for the restaurants yeah I think that music trends are much fa faster evolving than than uh, I mean you, you, you can be hit today and then and, and, and nec next year you're forgotten um, and with food at the end people just want to eat <laughs> you know the, the, and, and, and there's uh, of course on one hand the, 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 the variations is endless on the other hand uh, I, th I think it's it, it's a little bit less uh, um, sensitive to trends so there, there, there's more I don't know I think the trends first of all they are developing slower then of course you have uh, maybe the in, in fine dining maybe it's a bit faster, but especially for more mainstream food places, um, I, I don't think that. I'm, I'm trying to think for, for instance, uh, uh, like here in Vilnius, yes, of course, a lot of uh, change, but that, that that has very much to do because of the past of the country, the history of the country. But if I'm thinking, if I would be eating very, very different, let's say, in the 80s in Holland or now, uh, and, and yes and no, of course, it's, it's simply a different society, uh, but, 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 but I mean, in those, da they, those days people liked a nice piece of meat and nowadays they still do, sort of, there, there are things which will stay forever. And, and of course. So, so yeah, surely I think that 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 uh, clubbing industry is much more challenging uh, than than the restaurant industry in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking about restaurants, what was it like to start in the be beginning of 2000 or a few years later? 
your own restaurant. What I mean, can you just remind remind me what was the standard in Lithuania for that time? Well, well it was one of the reasons why, why, why I stayed is, is that that so, so my, my contract in Gravity finished and, and uh, um, indirectly I, I arrived to Lithuania because I was working. Uh, in Holland to start my own place, so the, 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 the f it shows that the, 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 those these sort of desires or interests uh, was there already before. And then uh, I really had a great, great time uh, here in Vilnius, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And then I was thinking that, yeah, of course I can go back to Holland now, and but everything is there already. Uh, and uh, still, it was a time, of course, in Lithuania where. Uh, it was very much the start of the development of, of, of the country and of, of the city, sort of. So, so there were still so many things missing. And I, I mean, everything was there, but by one or by two, uh, very, very few. There was not, not so much many places. I think in our first year, uh, when we would go uh, to eat something, probably we had our three, four places, and then and that, that was it. Uh, um, Can you remind and and and, uh, and 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 what uh, what we were missing ourselves very much was a place uh, an easy easy going place to go every day whether it's uh, for for breakfast lunch dinner drinks or anything sort of and um, so that was uh, always has been the goal for cozy an, an informal welcome uh, place not a pretentious um, hence the name cozy and, and uh, but uh, still. Nice food for an affordable price and so on. And uh, and yeah, and, and just coming out of clubbing business, uh, when I found the premises uh, where we are still today, and, and then we had this great basement, so then it became uh, a cafe, uh, a cafe slash restaurant upstairs, and, and the club uh, downstairs. So it was. Uh, I couldn't could not have dreamt about better premises, sort of, to find. And, and, uh, so it was exciting to start it, yeah, of course, and, for, for, for in, and, and at the end also uh, for the first time that you're doing it uh, by yourself and for yourself, uh, which is a totally different game than if you're just employed for s by somebody to run the place. Uh. So I imagine that, uh, as you said, uh, again, it took quite simple things, fresh quality food, mm -hmm. proper service, mm -hmm cozy atmosphere, cozy interior, to have a good restaurant. Because I do remember that at that time, it was not common knowledge to just have that. But while saying this, it might sound simple, but I know and Im I can imagine, again, how hard it was to bring those all things to, the well, to your guests. I, I think especially the service aspect, uh, the, 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 the coming uh, from the Soviet Union, where everything was state-owned and um, companies were not working for a result. Uh, it didn't matter because the, the, the profit was 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 uh, irrelevant, irrelevant uh, and suspicious, uh, and suspicious probably e even. So, so um, no matter where you would come, you would get the same approach. Whether you went to the shop, uh, the the the, the uh, or, the, or, the, or the person who helps you would be moody. When you would come to a government institution to ask a question, they would be moody. And you, when you would come to a restaurant, they would look at, at you like, why are you coming to bother me? Um, but again, uh, for me, uh, in the beginning, anyway, actually, it was enjoying and, and kind of exotic again. It is something different. And, 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 and then you also still understand that, well, at least if you, if you smile to them, uh, then you can make them smile back, sort of. So. So um, at, at the end we are all, all still human, but it was just this. This was just the way how you would serve people. <laughs> it's the, the standard. The, yeah, this is just the standard. So so. Uh, because um, if 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 you're not getting that, if he's too polite, something's not right here. Something. Something is yeah. like, yeah. am I getting robbed here or what? Yeah, almost like mm, this person is suspiciously fed. Why is uh, he or she smiling? <laughs> What does he know what the title yeah. is? Yeah. So you have the service, right? the, the psychology. What about the guests? What did, did the Vilnius local scene appreciate? 
a modern yeah definitely uh, I mean we, 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 we have been uh, uh, yeah successful from the day that we opened so that that, that was that was clear and then uh, in that, uh, for that of course I'm always still grateful for gravity uh, that uh, they gave me the start in uh, in, uh, in Vilnius uh, especially as it was such a high profile place uh, and I was running it, but it was not my club. But but most a lot of people didn't know that sort of so. so um, uh, rightfully or not rightfully, they didn't, uh, I got some credits for that at yeah. least. Uh, and then, uh, so um, as as running a club is a very social activity. So that that, that uh, in general that that made uh, uh, moving to Lithuania much easier because you are in a business where you are meeting people and. and if you're coming to a country because some kind of bank or something like that employed you, yeah, then you have your few few co colleagues uh, in your office, and then yeah, in the evenings and the weekends you have to create your own life. And for me, it was a bit the other way around. My evenings and my weekends were already filled up. <laughs> and in general, and like Horeca people, they're a bit different. They usually are more going, more crazy, because if you would have been employed in a business which would dealt with computer systems, even again, if it's a huge company, mm. I think the experience would have been a, a bit different. Totally different, of course. Uh, the, the, because then I, I, I never feel felt, well, on one, on one you will always feel like an expert uh, that uh, we are still coming from different cultures, uh, different backgrounds, but, 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 uh, but I never had any issues to integrate into society because yeah, basically, your job is that people are coming to you, uh, and and that people are coming to you to party and have a great time. Uh, so they're always grateful, and, and, and of course, it's the easiest way to make uh, to, to to meet new people and to make friends. And, uh, so that 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 uh, yeah, of course, has been super helpful. And, and, uh Coming back to cozy, I, I I really see that you're a positive guy, but I want to hear some negative stuff. What was the hardest thing? Not in general. As starting business, because to start a business everywhere is hard, but like some local co context that you found as a guy coming from Holland a bit unreasonable. Well, I, I, th I think that that I, 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 I sort of uh, first of all, uh, what I was at that, that time, 28 or something like that. So, so maybe no, what was it? Uh, 32. Wow. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, uh Thirty-one. Yeah, so thirty-one. Um, so th yeah, th th to, to start your first business, um, I had a lot of experience uh, as an employee in the Horeca, uh, uh, so th that was not a problem. But as I said, uh, to be on, on, the, on the business owner side or on the employee side, th that changes everything uh, because then. Everything is simply on your desk, and, and uh, yeah, you're not just a person coming in trying to make the best out of your shift and, and trying to serve your clients in the best way, uh, whether you make profit or not, uh, whether it's successful or not. It's only indirectly a sort of uh, uh, your problem. And then doing it in another country uh, uh, makes it maybe a bit more challenging. And then doing it in another country, which is in the transition phase from communism to capitalism, uh, makes it even more challenging. And um, I would say that the the the, 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 the starting up, I, I can't remember two big struggles in that. Uh, it was very simple. I, I, I was here. Uh, not too long time, so so yeah, I spoke a bit of the language, but for basically for all the local issues, uh, I would have a, a manager or something like that uh, uh, who would take care of that. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it was too too complicated. Uh, it, it's more a bit the, 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 the same old thing that you, you come with your papers and then and they tell you that ah, there's this and this document missing, so. Okay, you go back and you bring that document, and they say, "Oh, now this document is missing." A bit, a bit small things like that, but but in general, it it it, it was of course a, a super bu bureaucratic society. So as long as you take care of your paperwork, everything is kind of fine. 
Um, so, but, but the, the, the real lessons came only after opening. Uh, that the, f the, the first year was was was, uh, was very successful, both upstairs and downstairs. We had a lot of people. Um, um, but then th started to come in a little bit the complaints from the neighbors and institutions complaining because of the neighbors complaining mm -hmm. to them. And um, looking backwards, I would say that we maybe underestimated a little bit. We were always everything was so good and, and we were having a great time and it's not that we didn't do anything we, we, we tried to, to, to solve the, this sound issue but it was uh, concerned mostly with Coast Club right yeah it was all, all, all it was all, all related to, uh, mostly to, to, to the noise and uh, so yeah we, 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 we tried to, to change the sound to, to, to isolate but basically it wasn't enough and then now looking backwards my, my, my conclusion is very simple uh, yeah in, in this uh, in our case, at least, with the in, a resi in a residential building, it's very difficult to make a nightclub. Mm -hmm. um, there is technical solutions for it, uh, which are kind of doable when you just have straight walls and straight. Uh, but but um, being us in in a, in a basement with, with all the vaulted ce vaulted uh, ceilings and so on, which is cult cultural heritage, I think. Uh, also, still cultural heritage and so on. So it, it, it was it was it, uh, on one hand it was difficult to solve it, and on the, on the other hand, uh, we were like, ah, uh, let them write or let them complain or something like that. But uh, until the day came that we simply were ordered to close down, and then we were like, oh shit, <laughs> we didn't see that uh, that coming. And, uh, From the government. From government side, yeah. yeah. Uh, so th that uh, and then yeah, and, uh, so that was in February. We, we opened in April. That was in February. So so what? Uh, we were uh, up and running only for nine months, and suddenly uh, business was shut down. And, uh, uh, so that was painful, and uh, yeah, Horka, you know, it's a bit the same now in this year. So this 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 the the, the COVID uh, lockdown quarantine. To interrupt uh, the, the business is, is because the, the, the cash flow in in, in, in Horeca business is so short that uh, if you interrupt that within two three weeks you are really fucked uh, very much. Uh, as soon as you interrupt your your income, uh, you will get troubles in paying your bills from the last two three four weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's say like that. So, so that was uh, that was really 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 difficult. And uh, so, but at the same time. You always learn much more from your difficult periods than f f from your failures than from your uh, from your failures or from your problems or mm -hmm. difficulties than you do from your successes. Uh, successes are easy. I always dislike this about human nature. Why is the hard times always more educational than the good times? Uh, right? Because it makes you much more creative. Uh, you need to solve things, and and uh, when everything is going great, there is nothing to solve. There's uh, everything is just great. Makes you lazy. Uh, why would you change anything? Everything is good. And, uh, How do you look? Like you, you had your own experience when the government government said to shut down your business. Don't you look a bit with an irony, because? I hear from the local businessmen in the Horeca for the like, past five years that to run business in Lithuania and especially in Vilnius is very, very hard because of the, uh, the way that employees look at the job, no responsibility, they want to get more paid, bureaucracy, etc., etc., etc. Young people complaining. But look, when I remember you're not probably, you don't want to, of course, give compliments to yourself, but Cozin, as I remember, had this small also, this something very fresh and a small revolution kind of eye. Because that kind of place, that it had some similarity with gravity. You know that it was this was something different. Mm -hmm. And it really gave a tone, a, a way of doing business, or just a vision of how can a place be, which were not extremely or ridiculously overpriced, Nice food, fresh food. You have, you don't have to have uh, a suit and a tie to have a good service. Which I think at that moment people were like, "Whoa, a guy with a T-shirt and I'm getting good service. Whoa, how does it happen?" 
So how what would you say? do you agree with them with those guys who are uh, complaining for the five years for five last years now in Lithuania? For the last five years, uh, I, I partially I agree. I, I don't think that it became easier. Um, I think I tend to disagree a little bit that that, that uh, it's all about these days and that uh, the young people are so much uh, more spoiled and uh, it, 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 it is a bit of a, of a, of a thing but um, I think the main difference is that, that when, when I came here in 2001 people were dying to get a job and they would do everything for it and uh, we were paying four litas per hour you know that's one euro twenty. <laughs> And, um, and I mean, you you were paying, so that's already a lot compared to other businesses. Yeah, and and, and uh, <laughs> exactly, uh, uh, they, they even would get paid. Yeah, um, and not exploited or not uh, that they have to work 220 hours and get paid for 170 or something like that. But um, um, ah, but but but, but as soon as uh, yeah, probably. 2005, 2006, when when really the this uh, the economy started to grow very fast, and then, then until the crisis in what is it 2008, uh, those few years before that, uh, uh, they were speaking about the Baltic Tigers because the um, economy grew on yearly rates of seven, eight, nine, ten percent, something like that. It was really like a big boom uh, uh, year. So that's the period where it started to change and, and um, where you place a job at, for instance, for, for whatever position, whether it's for kitchen or for service or whatever, and then uh, people would send in their CVs and then you invite them for a job interview. And more or less at least 50% would not show up. And uh, that is nowadays still the same. Uh, and, and now I often hear the argument that, that it's like, ah, but it's these young people, they're not interested anymore. But then I'm like, yeah, but it, it happened already in 2006, 2007, the same. So it, it, it's not only th not only because of that, but, but um, uh, the, the shortage of, of workforce, uh, I, would, I would consider the, the biggest problem of the last five years. Um, because at, at some point you were simply forced to hire people which you would not really want to hire but uh, as at that moment you couldn't find anybody else or anybody better well let's try with this person and, and uh, there has been times that that i've been working with people and where almost half of my workforce i would kick them out the next day if i could uh, but if you don't have anybody to replace them for yeah well then it's the, again it, it's your problem uh, <laughs> as an owner to make the best out of it. And that would that would be my thesis actually because just saying and blaming the young people as they don't don't they don't appreciate money they don't have responsibility. My thesis is that that the problem is not with the young people because I can see that when they find meaning and where they find fun they can do extremely good job for uh, for free but what happens is that for some reason here especially in Horika for the last five years it became like this trend of having a dream of having a restaurant and then people who are not doesn't have expertise to start a restaurant they do start a restaurant and they don't know how to be leaders how to show quality people who are coming to work for them they don't they learn nothing you get mainly the idea that some guy or s some lady went once to Vietnam. She had a two week course on how to make noodles. Mm. And she now she knows is the head chef, the head service person and the owner of the restaurant. So that's what they see now in the, re in the restaurant area. Would you would you agree or would you disagree? Yeah, and, and, and yes and no, uh, I think that th that is one development which definitely is taking or took place. Uh, on the other hand, uh, and I think that that's an, an, a much more de important development, uh, I think that the, the last 
well, let's say 10 years, the, 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 the whole Orca developed in, in such a good direction and, and there are so many more quality places. Um, and I, 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 I dare to say that there would be m m much more quality places if there would be quality workforce. So uh, I think that, that, that now we reached uh, already for a few years, we reached the moment where the quality of the places is n no longer uh, there's there, there's no longer a lack of of, of good ideas, uh, but there is a struggle of indeed of business owners uh, in implementing their ideas, uh, in finding the people who can implement their ideas. Because I mean, you are totally dependent on your staff. Uh, you, it, at the end, it's it, it, it's your staff who has to do it, and, and uh, you can only yeah contribute your your little part in it. But but uh, you can have a great concept and a great building interior whatever but uh, if you have interested uh, uninterested people or simply people lacking the skills which i think in the kitchen is 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 is, is, a, is a more challenging thing to solve because it, it, it simply takes you, you don't become a good cook in, in, in six months yeah. Yeah. it takes three five seven years of th that is really a skilled high skilled job and especially uh, how to be fast and still keep the quality and, and uh, uh, it can be super stressful, you know, when you're in the kitchen and, 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 and the printer is keep on uh, checking out uh, uh, checks. Uh, the, the you have to be really very, very well, well organized and, th and that's you can be a great cook at home, but it doesn't mean that you can be a good cook in the restaurant. Uh, Usually it means that you will be worse cook in the restaurant than the person who has zero experience because you have your own flow you have like you just used to do things uh in a home style way mm -hmm. and then you have to refigure yourself which is usually totally so 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 that just uh, i think that I'm myself I'm, I'm a good cook i have a good understanding about food uh, i can sometimes help in the kitchen in cozy but only in the prep or but but i, I if if somebody would would, would chop off uh, top of his hand and then uh, I, I certainly would need to take over the the the, 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 the spotted service Impossible. You, you, first of all, you don't know where to find everything, but it, it's just. Uh, of course, I could do after a month of training or something like that, but but not just uh, mm -hmm. uh, just to step in. And in in service, it's 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 it, uh, it's it's a bit easier uh, as the basic things. You you can still provide the basic service. Uh, everybody can bring a menu to the table and then accept the order and then later when the order is ready bring it to the table again uh, on top of that uh, at the same time to be to become a really good waiter or waitress uh, also takes three four five years mm -hmm. uh, because it's just the, the way how you control the things how you have to see the needs of your guests already before they uh, i have to see already that you want another glass of wine before you know yourself mm -hmm things like that. Uh, so, it, it, in, it, again, in the speed in the organization, in how quickly you assess the situation, in your communication with people, there's a lot of things to learn. But it's e but it, at least it's easier because at least it's basic level that almost everybody can do. And uh, the basic level of uh, being in the kitchen and get the check from the printer and prepare the dish, not everybody can do it at once, sort of. Uh, so that there, is, there is a difference there. Um, but then again, I would uh, I would argue here that everything that you described is true. I fully agree with it. But I can compare my experience working in a kitchen here in Lithuania and in Holland. Yes. In Holland, it's a much more respected work. It's better. It's better paid work. I remember when I was going to my job and uh, the restaurant was was uh, in an old castle. So yes. for some reason you had tourists coming to the castle and they had the rumor that there's a Litauen cook working here. And they would know me just that there's a guy from Litauen working here in Chateau Narcan, which were sometimes even with, uh, I was greeted with clappings, with applaudisements. This is impossible here in Lithuania. Yeah, okay. The, 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 um, so we just, I will finish what I'm going sorry, here is yeah. that, I mean, it's, it's hard for young people just to find the motivation, I think, while advocating them to start this kind of work. 
because I remember that the salary wise in Holland, the guy working in IT and being a good good cook was the same or even the cook would earn a bit more because it was a stressful job. Maybe he would have a bit more hours, but here the, dis the disproportionate way of comparing IT guy and a cook, I think is not reasonable. Uh, um, proportionally, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, not, cook, not maybe not talking about chef cooks, but but just uh, a line cook. Uh, um, of course, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gone from Holland already for a lo long time. But, but, but for instance, I, I have a good friend uh, and. Um, uh, I think he's making something like two and a half or something like that per month. Uh, so yeah, of course that's much much more than here. But 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 uh, so is uh, the, the, the waiters and and, 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 and the, the, the paper delivery guy or, or the government uh, employee or the doctor. Uh, I mean, I mean um, proportion wise. So proportionally, I'm I'm not so sure if if uh, the cook is much getting much better paid there than here, um, especially. Five, five, seven years ago for sure, but but in the, in the last five years again because of the shortage of staff, uh, the, the salaries really increased a lot. Uh, I would say that they more or less doubled in four years, four or five years, which uh, which is mm -hmm. a lot, especially for the euro, of course. But um, yeah, well, it's a combination maybe of euro and and uh, but I think that what what uh, was the biggest impact was simply the shortage of staff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can back it up with my experience. Yeah, or even sometimes even three times more. Yeah, comparing the euro, the shortage, and in general, just you have the wages have been going up. Yeah. What would you be your solution or your advice? But, th but at the same time, if you yeah, if you're saying that in Holland uh, comparing to the IT, to the IT guy or something, like that, but even I don't know. As far as I know, still the average salary in uh, in, in Vilnius is about eight hundred to the hands. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, well, maybe the average salary for cooks also will be about 800 to the hands. But, but there's many places already where at least you can get nine, one, 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 something like but that. But there's a lot of places also that you could get less. Uh, yeah, well, if, if you have the quality, uh, there's nothing that stops you to find a better place. And if you cannot find a better place, probably you don't have the, the, the either the working mentality, attitude, skills, or then it's up to you. But, but uh and, ab and about the social aspect of profession, would you agree that in like in England and in Holland, it's a respectable job? But here, you sometimes uh, you I have this. In, in general, the 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 the, 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 the social aspect, uh, uh, not only about uh, appreciation of, of of jobs, but but in any case, the. the that's one of the things what I really notice when I'm coming back in Holland. Uh, you're whatever uh, at the bakery bu uh, buying a bread, and then uh, you're standing in the queue, and then everybody is chatting with each other. And then and, uh, here, when you would speak to the person in front of you in Maxima, they would look at you like, "What the fuck do you want from me?" Um, and um, and and then there's the other thing is that that. To me again, this is this is a Soviet heritage uh, where, where it's uh, so much. Uh, every, this is how it has to be. So everybody has to get a diploma, and you have to go to university. And uh, uh, it doesn't matter that 50% of the workforce here has a university diploma. So what is the worst? I would say more. Uh, maybe even more. Uh, while in all Western countries, it's it's a 10, 10 to 15. So then it, it it separates really the well maybe the intellectuals from the less interest for the more practical people or something like that. Um, so there's probably also quite a lot of pressure from families usually that, that uh, you cannot make a career in Horeca. How you can mm -hmm. be uh, a waiter or a waitress when you're 35? What is wrong with you? Well, um, <laughs> my, salary go, go to my salary is quite okay, uh, including with my tips. I can make one and a half, two thousand per month. What should I work in a bank uh, in some kind of shitty management position and I'm, uh, I'm getting my 900 euros per month and uh, what? Why? Well, because then you can say that you're this and I, I was, was joking that uh, we, we, should not, uh, we, sh we should not hire waitresses anymore. We should hire client managers and then everybody will be happy because I'm client manager. 
because that's what you are uh, in, in that job as a bartender, waiter. Of course, uh, of course. Um, so maybe if we would just employ client managers, uh, everybody would be happy. Food the heating manager also. Yeah, uh, production control <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> but but serious, yeah. seriously speaking, what would your be solution to this shortage of uh, just hard uh, hard workers? Uh, emigration. <laughs> Immigration, mm-hmm. actually, not emigration. Emigration is the problem, uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I think that the, 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 the I see it as the, the, the biggest threat for uh, for the near, let's say, 10, 20, 30 years uh, future of, of Lithuania. E- after that, my demographics it becomes even bigger. But let, let's not think that far ahead. Uh, um, maybe that's one of the few positive uh, uh, outcomes of of, of of the of the Corona crisis that uh, there is a little bit more workforce uh, uh, available, but that's I would still see that's probably a bit short term. Uh, How did Cozy live up in that period? How we did uh, developed? How did you just manage to cope? Yeah, cope well. In a roller coaster, I would say, uh, especially the, of course, this 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 first uh, first two months uh, we were completely shut down. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's quite an extreme experience. Uh, yeah, you, you cannot prepare for that. And uh, mm-hmm. now, if it would happen again, we, we would be prepared for it because you went through, through that experience uh, once. And and uh, yeah, of course, we have been closed down in, in uh, back in two thousand four and five and six uh, for different reasons, but. Um, but that was very, very different. Still, so, so I c- c- cannot say that that, that it's comparable. Uh, uh, but again, uh, not the easiest time. Uh, of course, uh, financially painful. Uh, luckily, we are in general a healthy com- uh, company, so so we 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 have been uh, able to absorb the the, the 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 pain. Let's put it like that. And and uh, and again, we learned a lot. Uh, so um, yeah, then I'm coming back again. That, that still from from hard times you're learning a lot, and, and uh, um, I don't know. M- maybe from 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 this time, uh, the the, be- the best conclusion is no matter what happens, uh, always look, try to make the best out of it. And and uh, yeah, funnily enough, uh, while a lot of people were sitting at home, but it's been maybe one of the periods in my life I've never worked so hard. <laughs> in that period, so so hard for so little. Mm-hmm. But it's very simple. When 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 uh, when suddenly your your uh, income is uh, declining by ninety percent, and then suddenly you're working for a couple of hundred uh, euros of turnover. Eh? We are not talking about profit here, of course. Then suddenly you realize again that okay, but uh, hmm, if I make thirty euros more, then I'm increasing my turnover by ten percent, sort of. <laughs> So, so then you understand that uh, suddenly uh, it makes worse to fight for liti- literally for every fucking penny, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So that's what that, that's what we did, and, and I think that because we did that, we uh, we made the damage smaller. Let's put it like that. Of course, it's mm, you cannot go come out of this in any good way, mm-hmm. but but you can come out of, the, uh, of it in a less bad way. Let's put it like that. What was your your reaction to the words of the twin prime minister that the businesses that shut down, shut it down, while in the lockdown, were bad businesses? Well, to be honest, I think it's quite a fair thing to say, uh, and, and uh, it, um, it, it depends, of course. Uh, there, there, there's of course some accountancy tricks where sometimes in bankruptcy can be can be uh, a kind of profitable way for you, sort of. Uh, but if if it's not in in, in this tricky way, um, I think that already for a few years, and, and there has been of course quite an explosion in in, in uh, um, horeca places mm-hmm. in, in Vilnius in, in the last three, four, five years. And I think that we reached a bit of a point of that it became too too much uh, because uh, yeah in, in summer the tourism uh, kept on growing until this year of course 
but in the winter we are still with the same 600,000 people and then yeah there's a little bit of growing buying power but but uh, that's what you could see really that places especially in the winter a lot of places are already quite suffering and yeah and then you get a bit uh, but in a way it's it's also kind of healthy it, it, it pushes everybody to to, <laughs> to improve themselves and, and the best will will survive and and, uh, and yeah of course um, uh, what cause you have survived if it would be happened in 2006 let's say two year to your business you don't have so much experience you well yeah it, it happened to us in 2004 no no sorry in, in 2005 and, and in 2006 and for this amount of time uh like well altogether uh, uh, i can't remember exactly but it, it was once five and months three and months two weeks or something like that but altogether yes but um so it would have there, there was there was one period uh, which lasted so long that we reached the point that we simply said that uh, we cannot survive any longer and then we simply reopened without having licenses and that was maybe the most fun period of our lives because then we got this uh, uh, yeah we got in, in into this kafkaesque bureaucratic situation that we were working and then uh, of course we got all the bloody institutions uh, on top of us and, uh, and they said that uh, you have to stop the work and, uh, <laughs> and then they said well take away our license <laughs> which we don't have and they were like ah yeah fuck because usually they would stop the work by take away your license but as we didn't have a license they didn't know how to stop the, us uh, to stop mm -hmm. to force us to stop the work and at the same time um, we only reopened when we uh, all the reasons which they gave us sort of in all the documentation uh, why we had to close down everything was solved only they uh, were simply slow or late or reluctant in uh, giving the license back so we decided okay we start to work and uh, and then uh, literally uh, we, we we got um, a pile of Paris uh, one on top of the other and and um, it, it was why I said why it was one, why it was so funny is I said uh, well okay we, we started to work again and at least create some generate some income again and then all these uh, inspectors from all kinds of different institutions uh, and all they came in the same way like yeah, we came to close you down but we don't know how <laughs> and the only thing what they could do is to write another pair of mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and well at, at some point uh, we did get our license back and then we got i think that we had we we, we get our 21 uh, in, in like four weeks or something like that so we li literally almost one every day somebody else came uh, um, so we brought it all to court and, and uh, to my big surprise, uh, because of we got uh, in the meanwhile we got our licenses ba licenses back. So to my big surprise, the court said, "Yeah, you should not have worked, but we understand your economical position and considering the fact that you have your licenses now, uh, now uh, we understand that you, you fulfilled all the requirements mm -hmm. to be working." So they dismissed everything without a single fine. That was uh, that was a bit big victory. It was. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And how how did we get there? Um, why why did, why did, why did we started to speak about that? Uh, it was about uh, would have cozy survived if it would be ah. second year the COVID. Ah, if it would be a second year, or so because I find this prime minister statement. A bit, a bit cynical, to be honest. Well, it 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 very much depends. It, it, uh, yes, he is right for uh, because I, I, basically the businesses which I saw which didn't reopen, I understood why they didn't reopen because indeed before that uh, the um, I, I didn't see much there and, and I, I was a bit waiting for like okay when are you going to close down. Um, but for instance, uh, in our case, for instance, um, we were s uh, in, let's say, December, January, January this year, we were super healthy and we had a, a, a healthy amount in our bank account. But we made a huge refurbishment uh, in our basement and we, would, uh, we were planning to reopen at the end of March. So all the financial funds which we had 
uh, was invested. So there, so the, for us that was a struggle. The, the only uh, so the only thing what what helped us to 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 come through it is is that um, I uh, we, we still had had a, had a, a certain sum uh, reserved f to pay off the last uh, contractors for downstairs, uh, the, the furniture guy or the the painter or whatever, mm -hmm. and and uh, so that money we had in the account, uh, basically uh, waiting for the job to be finished uh, so that we could pay it. And um, so because we had that still in the account, we, 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 we have been able to survive only with the kind uh, understanding of those people who did those jobs uh, for us in the basement and who had the understanding that, okay, well, at least all of them, they got already 70% of their money, so nobody was left without money. Mm -hmm. And I just had to tell them, sorry, um, yeah, you have to wait a bit. And then, yeah, of course, it, it, it was a national <laughs> crisis, you can say. So everybody had an understanding for that. But if it, if it would have happened uh, three weeks later, then all those people I would have paid already. And my bank account was, was planned to be on zero, more or less. That, that was the cash flow planning. And then we would, re we would uh, open the basement and, and then it would grow again. That's how it was planned, sort of. So... But uh, but still, even if it would have happened like that, yeah, uh, one way or the other, you will find your solutions. So, yeah. uh, uh, because you, uh, otherwise, you know that you're a super healthy business. And I, I do think, but but like um, we we came through it quite quite okay. But uh, we we did take a business loan. We uh, we got quite uh, through it quite okay because uh, VME, Sodra and so on, uh, they, they allowed you to uh, delay your pay payments. It's a delay of payments, it's so you're, you're just building up a debt. Um, so we got thr uh, through it quite okay by building up debt, mm -hmm. not not uh, in, 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 in any other way. Yeah, you cannot just uh, forget it. But it's okay uh, because we are a healthy business, and, and in, in normal times uh, we will earn back those debts and, 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 and start to make profit again. So I can I can uh, understand those businesses who say uh, who would say that yeah, in the last half year already I was not earning money, I was even losing and losing a bit, and every month struggling to pay my suppliers or my staff and this and that. And yeah, now I'm closed. And okay, with, with, the, with the, the the support measures which were there, you could sort of kind of con reopen after that, but but uh, only with an even bigger debt than you had before already. And how are you going to pay that debt if even before the the quarantine you were not even making a profit? And then I would also say that yeah, sorry, let's just pull the plug, and there's no point to. Uh, there, there is no way that the debt, which because really in, in, to be closed in two months for two months, that that, that, that is a, a super expensive. Especially job. for the restaurants. For restaurants, for I think for any 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 business, but but but. Uh, um, so I can imagine that 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 there is companies who say that yeah, the debt which I will build up in that period, uh, that is more than the profit I made in the last two years, for instance. So why should I continue? Uh, then I know that the next three years, two years, three years, I'll be wa working only maybe to ba pay back that debt. Mm. Why? Why? Yeah. Which, what me measures did Holland take to keep up their businesses? Uh, well, they, they called it an intelligent lockdown. So for instance, the shop, they remained open. But a lot of places at the end simply closed voluntarily uh, yeah. because uh, there's so, so little uh, uh, customers. So um, restaurants they were closed down. So quite similar, I would say, maybe a bit later. Lithuania was very quick uh, after this first 10, 15 cases. They said lockdown, and uh, Holland waited for that much, much, much longer and. In, in, in general, I think that one of, not one of, the, I think that the, the, the main reason why in, in Lithuania it's relatively still under control is that there's so much less people. I mean, the country is almost twice bigger as, uh, 
as Holland, but there's uh, six times less people living. So that means that it's 10, 12 times more crowded in Holland. Lithuania is number one in Europe by people living alone. So comparing the amount of flats or spaces where you can live, houses, maybe some village houses where people live, it's number one in Europe. My thesis would be is that now the trend is a bit too much of trying to Im imitate Michelin. I still think there is a vacuum for simple, good, a bit cheaper, cheaper restaurants. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that, that mostly the street food took over that function. Um, Which we don't have actually here. Oh, we have, and we don't. We have, we have, we have a bit all this uh, this food markets uh, where we can say it's kind of street food places. Uh, then, of course, in summer you have a bit all this uh, food trucks. Um, but uh, but I agree with you that 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 um, quality, more friendly priced places. There's few of them, uh, so th so you have a bit this bit more upscale already where you can mm -hmm. eat very well and often very overpriced there's a few of them where you get really great value for money but uh, it's not still a meal for every day price wise but but uh, but um, where i really think that, that the price quality balance is really really great but i also think that there's quite some pretentious restaurants where i'm like yeah okay the food was fine but the price which you charge for it is it's just Total nonsense. But lazy. Yeah. Lazy. Oh yeah. I, um, I mean, at the end, if the place is full, you, uh, the, the owner is right. <laughs> but, but I will not come back there because I just don't find it uh, 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 a fair price for what you get, sort of. Um, so that's more the, those more pretentious places mm -hmm. where, you, and you can see even a bit the crowd is coming there. 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 I kind of like it because it is expensive and, uh, and it's super sort of cool to be there or something like that. But but uh, the, the you feel that the, the they evaluate more by the price than by the quality of, of, of what you get. So. Fucking sugar more. Uh, I don't know. I've, ne <laughs> I've never been there, so I cannot uh, cannot judge about that. But uh, yeah, but, but how how do I see the at least the near near future? Well, even now I still see new places opening up, and, and, and I think that it's always good because again it's renewal, it's it's stimulating others as well. Uh, all that is fine. I still think that we have a very hard uh, autumn and winter, right? um, very difficult. Uh, but at the same time, as I, I hope at least that we will be able to continue to work. But sometimes it's better to be closed than to work on thirty percent of your co of your of your capacity. Mm -hmm. Something like that. But I think that even without restrictions, it would be a, a, a hard uh, because there is still a lot of fear in people, and you, and you notice that the habits habits of people they changed a bit. Uh, that like what? Well, that that uh, they would maybe go out more often, and now they're thinking that, oh, maybe I'll better stay at home. It's still a bit safer. Or they they will. There is a group of people who only go out when, I uh, sort of they, they, they like. Okay, now I haven't been out for three weeks now. Uh, now I have to go, or I really have to meet somebody or something like that. But but uh, not not everybody, of course. But but. There is there is a group of people who are simply staying home more. Then uh, tourism, of course, in summer was already down a lot, and and, and I think that well, always uh, of course during the colder months uh, there is less tourism. But all especially all the tourism what was there in the winter months, except for maybe this one week of Christmas tourism. But but uh, it's business tourism, and and all companies. They are not sending uh, their staff, their employees anywhere until uh, unless it's really, really, really needed, sort of. But but all these conferences and team buildings or mm -hmm. all those things uh, that it's just for the next year or two years that's that's gone. Um, and then the still the question is is okay, how much of your place are you allowed to use? Uh, 
it's also a bit of a gray zone now officially still there's there's this two meter distance rule in every restaurant not a single restaurant is looking after it but if you would follow the rules it would simply mean that that, that yeah only every second table you can use so, so if you yeah you're working on half of your capacity now in summer it's fine because you have your outdoor uh, outdoor seating but I think that uh, yeah, autumn, spray, autumn, winter uh, is going to be really, really tough. Comparing to last year, the summer turnovers. How? For the whole summer, about seventy-five percent, I would say. Three quarters. Could it have been worse. Could have been worse, but the people. Always, I'm always saying that that doesn't mean that we also have seventy-five percent of our profit. Uh, sometimes uh, a decline of 10-15% in turnover can simply mean that you're going from a healthy profit to zero profit. So, um, Especially in restaurants, where the profit margin is like, what, the, the, the margins are, are very small, um, mm. so uh, I would say that um, we were lucky to get this uh, NOMOS uh, subsidy uh, through Indaga, so we are paying less rent in this period. Um, well, then there was, of course, a bit of help in this Prastova, and there are still now a bit of subsidies on on, uh, on salaries. Without that, we would not have made any profit in this summer. No? Mm -hmm. um, so 75% sounds like, well, it's not too bad, but, but uh, at the end it's all about, yeah, the business has to make profit. So uh, the only reason why, yes, we did make a little bit of profit this summer, but that's because of the help we received. And that little bit of profit is only compensating a little bit of the losses which we made in the few months that we were not uh, allowed to work at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not feeling kind of guilty or something like that for the help that we are getting from government side, because of course... Why should businesses? How much taxes do you pay per month? The amount is ridiculous. Because you as a health business, you paid every month a huge amount of money yeah. to, to government. Yeah. Because of that, because of that, or because of that. And this is like once a 10 year time where government can help a bit. So you said that they delayed the taxes. I wouldn't be even against, against clean businesses for uh, making them less for that period, for some period of time. Uh. Well, the government is, of course, also not a money machine. Uh, they cannot uh, just, well, theoretically they can, but th th that's usually not very uh, uh, wise to just to, to start the, 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 the money process. But um, So I've, I, I don't know, I, f I find it very difficult. Um, on one hand, uh, you could say that, uh, okay, uh, certain type of types of businesses uh, like us or hairdressers or um, Go on and on and on. Uh, shops actually, the, 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 a lot of shops need to be closed and, and, and of course many other businesses. So on one hand you can say that none of these businesses choose for that. So they have to be compensated fully because they are closing for the sake of everybody. For the sake of, 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 of healthcare, of, of, of uh, yeah, well, for everybody to, to, to be healthy. Yeah? Uh, not by their own will. So. Yeah, on one hand, you could say uh, that we have you have to compensate uh, be compensated 100% for that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, probably it's also a bit of part of the entrepreneurial risks which you are taking. And, and, uh, I don't know. Um, the, the the impact of of this crisis is so big that you can only uh, go through it if everybody contributes their little part. Uh, from government, from businesses, from people. Uh, uh, people were on Prostova, uh, and, and yeah, they, they got their the, this minimum salary uh, uh, compensated. But uh, as we spoke now, uh, cooks are not getting 600 anymore, they are getting 900 or 1000. So, okay, they, they have been sitting in, uh, at home, but not for 1000, but for 600. So, that is your part as an employee. So, me as an employer, I have to contribute my part, uh, and then the government has to come. come. It cannot all be only on the shoulders of the government because the, the country will simply go bankrupt yep. then. So uh, I think that th this is such a massive uh, uh, thing which has impact on literally every member of society. 
that the only way we can get out of it is if every member of society, whether it's an individual or a company or a government or whatever, is contributing. And, uh, so, so for me, looking backward at this last half year, I, I think there's kind of an okay balance in, in, in that. Uh, I, yeah. What can you see that you're really, uh, you're really a Dutch guy? You don't have this communism seat that I have in myself. Like, government has to do everything, you know. Of course not. <laughs> and and uh, uh, please, <laughs> don't let our government do it, because we can do it twice better of ourselves. Try not to let the, your government do anything, <laughs> you know. Do it yourself. Uh, you can always do it better. Because considering your experience as a restaurateur and in Horik in general, not only restaurants, but as we can see, uh, the experience is uh, a bit wider, much more wider than restaurants. I always saw quite negatively people who have dreams of having a restaurant. My advice was always that you must look it as a business, not as a dream. What would be your advice to the person, which personally I know a lot, has this quite strange dream to have a restaurant or a cafe? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people have this romantic idea about, about uh, having your own bar or restaurant or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, I always tell people, please don't. <laughs> It is really well. I mean, uh, no, do it uh, if if that's what you if you're hundred percent sure that that's what you really want. But it it, it, it uh, it's a lifestyle. It's 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 uh, yeah. First of all, it's a lifestyle. So you have to do. Do you understand what it means uh, that, that that you will be working most of your weekends, your uh, holidays, uh, your all those times that people usually are sitting at home, you are at work, and, 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 and vice versa. So when you're off, uh, people with normal sort of nine to five jobs there are at work. So uh, so that that's one thing. The second thing is that uh, the, the profit margins in this business on average are very, very small. It uh, doesn't mean that, that, that there's not some businesses who are making really good profits, but usually, yeah, that's those uh, hyped places for one or two years. So there's very few places who are making 50-20% profit margins mm -hmm. every year, year in, year out. I, 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 I cannot even think of one of them. Uh, for a few years you can reach that if, uh, if you're really on the top of your, your performance. Um, but for the industry, on average, it's five percent. So, mm -hmm. so that's why the the, the the line between making profit and not making—I mean, a, a small decline—and you're already fucked. Uh, your expensive dishwasher broke down. Ah, this month's no profit. Uh, to to give an example, uh, so, so I think that people have much too romantic an uh, uh, idea about it, and and for some reason. Uh, think that it's very easy to make money in this this business, and the other thing what what I can imagine is that maybe in, not only in this country, but that that uh, it's it's uh, of course a business where a lot of cash money is going on. So maybe for those businesses who are doing a lot of black, um, it can be become more profitable. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. But but uh, if if you uh, if you try to do everything by, by the book, which I think in the long run is always the, the better better way to do it. Um, then it's not easy, but it doesn't mean that it's not doable. And if, if, it's, if it's what you, uh, if it's <laughs> something which you really enjoy, but, uh, but you have to enjoy to be in the service. Uh, if you just think to be ah, this, this, this restaurant owner, and then I can come to my own restaurant, then uh, that's going to fail for sure. Unless you're a fucking great manager, or you have some, or or you 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 manage to find this amazingly good manager who's looking after the place as if it w uh, was his or her own. Ah, it's again, and then you, you, as I said, it's not so you, not so difficult to open something and to make it work. But can you make it, keep it uh, working for for the next uh, five years, for ten years, for fifteen years? Uh, 
for the first one or two years, yeah, all your friends will come mm -hmm. and so on, maybe. But it's, uh, I think, that, but it's funny, you know, because a lot of people have this uh, romantic idea about it. Yeah. Mm, they do, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie, thank you for the conversation. It was a pleasure.